if we are going to go there, like what happens nowadays is when we go the five days of Hajj, especially. So when we go to Mina, everybody just go to sleep. So the five prayers, what happens is they just wake up for prayer and then go to sleep again. They wake up for prayer and go to sleep again. We're not there for sleeping. We have to understand this. So a lot of people, subhanallah, I'm talking through experience. I tell them at least read the Quran. Last year I went, mashallah, I had a group of people, uh, about 25 people. They said, we're going to go with you only. I said, if you go with me, you have to have this expectation from myself. All of us, what we're going to do is we're going to do five tawafs a day. Are you ready for that? Do you understand? So apart from the Hajj days, you know, so I said before that when we're going to go, you're going to do five tawafs and I'll tell you, you can do it after each namaz one or you can do it at night time, three, four together and then do one after, uh, another time. And we want you to read 10 Jews of the Quran every day. 10 Jews. They said, oh, is it not, not going to be hard? I said, try it out. So we have a target. We don't have a target. Uh, let me tell you, we, throughout our journey, we have three weeks, four weeks, whatever. We don't even open the Quran. Many of our brothers and sisters, this I got a big list here. This is for my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my wife, my children, my nephew, my niece. And it's got a big list of things. So what I always say, the best thing to give them is the tawaf and the duas and the umrahs and all this. Whatever, just any the duas that we should give. We should tell anybody who says, look, you know, I will do dua for you. And I take the names and I said, I'll send the Salat of Islam on with your name to the Prophet That's the best thing that you can do. Lastly, if it's a direct flight, so best is in the airport or home, put your ihram on. Like we're going like Turkish Airlines, we usually put it in Istanbul. So basically, if it is a direct flight, so my advice to everybody is the best thing is put your ihram and everything either in the airport, there's rooms there available or you can, the even better is put on the ihram from your home and you can make the intention later on, you can make that intention the, uh, 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 in the uh, plane as well. So once you put the ihram on, uh, the ihram, the piece of cloth, that's not actual ihram itself. What is ihram? The talbiyah and the niyyah. So a lot of people make that mistake. So once you put the white cloth on, you can put khushbu, you can put perfume, everything on. Until you make the intention and that and you do the talbiyah. So you put that on, you read two rakats of Salatul Ihram, the two rakats which is Nafal. In that you read Kuliya Al-Kafir You don't need to read this surah, you can read any other surah as well. But it's preferable to read these two surahs. So then after that, when you know that before the Miqat, the, the most important thing is, if you, do, if you don't want to make the intention now, and my advice is not to make the intention then, you can make the intention just before the Miqat. So you can make it inside the plane as well. So make the intention and read the Talbiyah. Talbiya at least once. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika lak, labbaik inna alhamdu wa ni'mat lak, wal mulk la sharika lak. So if you <coughs> know it by heart, mashallah, read it. If you don't know it by heart, read it by looking inside. So you have to read that once at least. Do that the talbiya and the niyat. The niyat will be just umrah. We're doing just umrah because we're going to do tamattu, isn't it? And umrah is first. So basically we're going to make the intention of umrah. And that umrah will be on behalf of ourselves. Like those people know Arabic niyat, Allahumma inni uridul umrah, fayassirha li wa taqabbalaha minni. Make the intention in that way. So we make the intention and after putting on the ihram and after we made the intention, the talbiyah, now we're in the state of ihram. We can't put any soap. It's very important that we remember in the plane, they will give you these tissues which got fragrance in. So avoid touching them. Go into the bathroom and uh, using soap, shampoo, things like that, avoid using all these kind of things. So many of the brothers, and subhanallah, I was just in Umrah in Ramadan, and subhanallah, these hotels, the five-star hotels they have, they have the place where they read the Salah. So these people, I asked them, they, they said in the two weeks, we just don't own one Umrah, and after that, we don't go to the masjid. Forget anything else, they don't even go to the masjid to perform the salah, they perform it in the five-star hotel. And the food is, everything is any, all uh, any, given there, the preparation all is served there, the uh, laundry, everything is provided there, so they don't go out. So once I was coming down to, uh, on the, in the lifts, I was coming for Fajr Salah, I said, Sheikh, where are you going? Just read with us. I said, why, is, if that's the case, and I would have read in my hometown, Bradford, in the UK. So you need to make sure that's mental physical and verbal so physical is very important that throughout our hajj we are fulfilling those things that we are reading namaz we're spending our time Do you know we get enough sleep so have a timetable the best thing is have a timetable. but mental is that in our minds that we have all the time allah you have given me this tawfiq you have given me this ability to do hajj it's not due to my money it's not due to my strength it's only due to your infinite grace and mercy that you have let me do hajj so that mental preparation Phys any the verbal preparation all the time like alhamdulillah anything food not there like alhamdulillah food allah fed me all these years if that time it didn't come at the appointed time no problem alhamdulillah like alhamdulillah there's millions of people they don't get food all the way through 
Alhamdulillah, we got Allah. Alhamdulillah, Kashif. There's a bigger picture. We have to look at the bigger picture. In Hajj, we have to look at the bigger picture. We can't be thinking to ourselves, huh, what is happening here? I haven't got my food. Look at the, this toilet. It's, you know, it's not flushing. This room, the bed, you know, the, uh, the, and the headboard is broken. And this, and we, you know, for petty things. And subhanAllah, it was, Azan was taking place. And I was seeing in thousands coming to the hotel. I said, what about Salah? He goes, no, no, we don't, we're not going to read Salah now. We need to change our clothes. I said, you can change your clothes later. Read Namaz in the Haram. You know, it's not going to be wrong to read in the state of, in that area. No, no, I need to take it off. Uh, you know, this is, you know, it's uneasy. The ihram people just want to make, a lot of people go and they just want to do umrah quickly so they can get off the ihram. They can just take the ihram off. They just hate put, keeping the ihram on. So they will just go, to, it's not just a, a practical thing that you just do it and that's it. A lot of, so I, the group that I go with myself, I said, look, we have to do it properly. You know, son, I want you to read the Quran. I want you to read the du'as. And in Safa Marwa as well, as well, every time we reach the Mount of Safa Marwa, we're going to do du'a. If you stay with me, I'm going to do du'a with you. If you're not, you know, son, at least do du'a yourself. And do, don't just go around seven times and there's no spirituality in it. There's no essence in it. There's no substance in it. Don't do it like that. We're not here rushing, you know, uh, like, you know, speeding and trying to see, I did it faster than you. And people talk after that. How long did it take you? It took me two hours. How long did it take? One and a half hour I beat you, didn't I? Half an hour I beat. So, so it's not about beating and competing with each other. Because this journey of Hajj is a journey of love. You know, a person in this world, when he wants to meet his Mahbub, he wants to meet his beloved. You know, so look at the preparation he does. You know, son, he'll change his clothes, he'll put perfume on, he'll make sure he's looking good, he'll be putting this gel on, this, that, and, you know, nothing smelling, you know, his, you know, his mouth is smelling good, and everything, he'll be doing everything, just for a worldly, ishqe majazi ke liye. You know, son, and this is ishqa haqi, that's the true love. So a person, subhanAllah, we need to make preparations fully, from the beginning, and as I said, the physical preparations, we need to do that, and stop wasting time, we can't be wasting these moments, and especially in Medina Munawra, the biggest problem is that, when we go to Medina Munawra, just a few things about Medina Munawra, that when we go to Medina Munawra after Hajj, you know, son? So basically people think that everything is over, that is my time for shopping. So, and you know, trying to buy, or oh, that doesn't fit him, or oh, I need that size. No, she wanted this uh, blue color, she wanted this white color. And for this we are spending hours and hours going from one shop to the other shop. And then we are, then we are talking about this for hours and hours inside the hotel. And whilst doing all this, then our namaz is missed as well. And this happens on a daily basis. So basically in Medina Manawara, it's very important that we spend our time in reading Durush Sharif. In spending our time fulfilling the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, respecting it and not to make any, especially in Medina Munawwara, never ever take out any faults on food and not argue with people or any shops or things like that, because this is the city of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hajj itself, the training itself. Obviously, the main important thing is we can explain to you this practical Hajj. This is the way you put the ihram. This is the way you do tawaf. But uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, the group that you're going with, the ulamas always consult with them and go if you haven't done hajj before if you haven't done umrah before it's your first time always go with someone who has done it who a scholar and get the advice understand it properly before you go ahead and do this a lot of people what happens is they just follow the crowd you'll see a woman reading and all the men reading after them and all you follow that person as well so a lot of people do that. You see somebody is reading namaz in this particular way. He's raising his hands every time. He's saying amin loudly. So mashallah, this looks fun. Let me do that as well. At the state of ihram, we can't use any soap, shampoo. Sisters, many of the sisters, what they do, they wash the clothes in the rooms, in the bathroom, and they use soap powder. So avoid that as well. So people were uh, hungry. So we said, we'll go and eat in this particular hotel. So the person is uh, uh, any, very unusual. So he was standing there, putting perfume in everybody's hand. So everybody's lining up and, and he, so, so you're passing by suddenly this person he was i just moved my hands so sudden a split of a second and he's put it on everybody and they said Mufti Sahib, you're very quick you moved your hands why because this we're in the state of ihram because oh no this is the thing that's why the scholars have said to this extent whilst in the state of ihram don't even go and kiss the hajar aswad because people put perfume on that we don't realize if you really are wanting to kiss the hajar aswad do it well not in the state of ihram so these are big, I tell everybody to go to sleep and because we want to freshen ourselves in the way that when we are fresh, then we're going to do the Umrah. We don't want to do Umrah in a state where we're tired and we're sleeping and this and that. We want to do it properly. So my advice to everybody is when we go there, because it's going to be very hard, you know, going through the immigration in Jeddah, those who've been, you know how hard it is. So I've been seeing it's the same situation every year. So basically the amount of time that is spent there. And by the time you get to your hotel, from the time you landed, from the time you'll be very lucky to get there by eight to 10 hours. Even though it's only one and a half hour journey, 
from uh, you know uh, from Jeddah to Makkah Mukarramut, you you have to stop there for the Muallim office. You have to stay for the uh, wristbands and all these other things as well, and all the checks and all the rest of it. Small, it's best to make like small groups and then go for the uh, tawaf. Do the tawaf, the safa marwa, and then after your uh, after you done these two things, then uh, after you do the halak for the sisters is the trimming. So you the ladies what they should be doing is getting the hair and uh, make it into four different parts and one part on the fingertip. Just roll it on the fingertips and just cut the amount of hair that they will be released from the ihram by that. Men they can do the trim to make sure that all the hair is cut and equal. So we have to avoid short back and sides. Especially obviously saw back inside is the wrong thing itself. <clears throat> but in the state, the state of Ihram, we need to keep that in mind. If you trim it, make sure that all the hair is on the right size to make it small. Or the best thing is to do halak, completely shave. We have kafan on and we're thinking about getting our sons and daughters married. Please avoid it. You know, once we get out of Ihram, then you can think about it. So we're always thinking about these kind of things. At that time, what's the purpose of that Ihram? What's the reason behind it? So a person thinks about that because this journey, when we do the Qurbani, instead of doing the, our Qurban, we're doing that Qurban is, is to imitate and, and remind ourselves that we're giving our life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So instead of any sacrificing ourselves, we're sacrificing an animal. That's the purpose of it. That's what we put the ihram on. So everything a person <coughs> in at that time to put on perfume, everything is not permissible. Why? Because you're going into your grave. That's the wisdom behind it. We don't realize the wisdom. So after that what happens is the days which are between the uh, days of Umrah and the days of uh, Hajj we got an amount of time in that time we should spend our time in doing Tawaf in reciting the Quran instead of wasting our time a lot of people they just waste their time they go to different restaurants and takeaways tasting food no no we're not here to taste food or oh, have you tried this restaurant I did so people are just talking about restaurants. There's this Bangladeshi restaurant they give you shutki and they give you this and that so we're talking about these kind of things. So basically we have to keep in our mind that we're not there to taste different types of food 